Hey, I'm just getting Starbucks with my mom. She's uh, she's kind of shy. What do you what do you drink every day, mom? Frappuccino. What kind of frappuccino? Uh, chocolate. Yeah, mocha, mocha frappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> Is Starbucks my favorite coffee? Not by a long shot. Do I drink it every day? Yes. Am I basic? Yes. I'm going to be making a slight lifestyle change. Hey girl, you're looking good in this natural light. Got some cool science news for you on deck. Korea's artificial sun broke a record, blazing hotter than the core of the real sun. Sounds pretty cool. I don't know what that means, but the headline is in all caps. Everyone knows caps lock is cruise control for cool. If you were the kind of nerd who wanted to go to space camp as a kid, and I was, then you know the likely fate of our Earth is to eventually, five or so billion years from now, be gobbled up by our own sun like a crispy little crab rangoon. And this sucks because, like, I live here, man. What am I supposed to do? You think that people aren't going to just sell their homes and move? But what if I told you that we could just make our own sun? We could just nope out of here into the starry void and set up somewhere else. Well, to do that, you're gonna need to unlock the secrets of thermonuclear fusion. You think you can just pop two hydrogen atoms into the oven and bake up a batch of helium? Okay, Liz. To this end, a bunch of miniature suns are under construction around the world. And one of these, Korea's superconducting Takamak Advanced Research, or K-Star, managed to create a plasma state which enabled them to sustain a temperature of 100 million Celsius for 20 seconds. And I can't do math or convert Celsius to Fahrenheit with a simple Google search or anything, but guys, that's sun hot. That's two fucking scoops! Of course, there's more practical applications for this kind of tech than just yeeting another star into the sky, calling it Jungkook and just orbiting it forever, letting it provide for your every need. But my eyes are on the hype. This is serious Black Mesa beeswax, and there's no possible way this could possibly go wrong. I wanted to bring this up because I'm a man with a very limited STEM education. I mean, look at me, I'm a liberal arts kid. But I think it's very useful to have an interest in science, especially when your other interests are more like politics or literature or fashion. I think it provides a richer perspective on the world around you. Personally, I'm into astronomy. I begged my parents to buy me books on space when I was a kid. I was like hooked on the mystery of the topic, the daring and ingenuity it took just to study space and the aesthetic. When I got into college and I was sort of forced to take science, um, I decided I was gonna take astronomy and I was actually pretty okay with it. So when I read a story about astronomy, it kind of takes me away from the earthly matters that kind of keep me awake at night. It gives me hope that there's something beyond me, beyond us, beyond humanity, beyond Earth. And I don't mean to minimize people's trauma or anything, but that's kind of a comforting feeling to me, that I don't really matter. <laughs> I didn't really need to read a book on space to know that though. What else do we got? Adidas to launch plant-based shoes made from mushroom leather. Delicious, can I eat it? Imagine that, hiking boots you could take like on a hike and if you get stuck, like in the middle of the desert, you can just take off your shoes and eat them. Listen, I'm not saying it's a genius idea, but I am saying it's a very lucrative idea. Booze fairies flit across America. I'm interested. <laughs> that didn't work at all. I'm interested. <laughs> I can do that at parties though. These booze fairies are women who ding dong ditch you. But instead of finding a bag of flaming dog poop on your porch, you find booze. You basically give this group your preferences for booze, and then they assign you to a fairy, and then the fairy comes to your house and leaves you booze, and then you have a good time. In these gift baskets, sometimes they put other nice little things in there like socks. Everyone needs socks. I love socks. People who receive this fairy boon are encouraged to pay it forward. See, I think this is brilliant. I know a lot of people in my personal friend circle who would be just a shoe in for this job. They're basically already fairies. Well, I'm thirsty. Bring me booze. And lastly, it's Hayao Miyazaki's birthday. Well, by the time this comes out, it'll already be tomorrow in Japan. So, sorry. Happy belated birthday, Miyazaki-san. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Uh, sorry, it's gonna be kind of a short one. I uh, kind of woke up very late um, for no reason whatsoever. 
Um, tomorrow, I hope to uh, get a little bit more done, uh, but until then, I've been Grover, you've been fantastic. Come back and watch me again sometime, me hearties. <laughs>I've been trying to untangle this chain for like hours now. This is literally what I meant when I said I've got other things to do. Oh, forget it.